So you brought another topic, and let's focus on. Don't no worry. Sorry about that. Uh, afternoon. How are you today? Hello. Uh, in the PMMR, uh, you currently have no targets set for enrollment. Uh, is CUNY interested in seeing enrollment decline, or would you like to see it increase as the population of our city increases, or do you want it to stay flat? I think goals are helpful. What should the goal be? Yeah, I think overall we want we we definitely want to see enrollment increase, but. For each individual campus, that might be different. There might be some campuses that we feel are um, at their maximum that we want to hold so, flat, but I think overall we do want to see an increase. Okay, so will you change your targets in the MMR with an up arrow to indicate that throughout the CUNY system, you're looking for the community co college enrollment and the senior colleges to go up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll work um, with the administration on um, the next iteration of the... Okay, of so... The, and I guess of the management report to reflect that. Ne next question. Uh, as we talk about economic development, one of my colleagues brought up Amazon and $3 billion for 25 or 35 or whatever many billion dollars in incentive. Do CUNY graduates earn more income and therefore pay more taxes than folks who do not possess a community college or college degree? Absolutely. And not only that, but um, I think the data shows that about 80% of CUNY graduates actually remain in New York State, New York City after they graduate. So not only are they earning a higher salary because they have a CUNY degree, but they're staying here and, and are contributing to the tax base. I, I, I thought that would be your answer. Now I'm really pleased about the testimony about a 300 million, sorry, $295 million investment in LaGuardia Community College and Bronx Community College for infrastructure, will that yield additional seats? Will that yield additional students and additional capacity? The, 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 uh, Is your mic on? The LaGuardia? The, the roughly $300 million, will it yield new school seats? Will it yield more economic activity? It will, it will, the LaGuardia will, will basically yield more, more uh, seats. Um, more space because we have we had to take care of the interior before the exterior before we touch the interior. So, but so this won't affect the interior. The interior is the next phase. Yes. How much is that phase going to cost? Well, we are the, the size of that building is almost the, it's eight hundred thousand square feet, which is almost the size of one or two of our colleges. So each floor of that building to renovate it costs somewhere about in, in the excess of $80 million. So in that building, five, four and a half, four and a half floors are occupied. Okay. We are working on so the So you're going to do one more floor for $80 million. That'll increase your capacity by at least 20%. I can't, I'll, I'll have to give you what the percentage is. It depends on what the program is that's in there. Okay. How many people can you educate in a hole in the ground? Um, not many. Does CUNY currently own a hole in the ground in my district? CUNY owns the site at 74th Street, yes. And um, how would you describe that site? Is it a site where it is ready to educate students? No, it's not. Okay. Do you currently have a plan in this whole document and all your testimony to do something with that hole in the well, ground? Well, actually, um, the request for the need for the building is in this in, in our request. But we are now meeting with the state. We're meeting with um, the city and we're meeting with um, MSK um, as we speak to talk about what we can do to basically take care of the issue that you're describing. What, what are the number of, uh, how much are you asking for in the, your document? The new document asks for 300 million for the corn shell. And for 300 million dollars, how many square feet and how many students will we be able to educate? Um, the, that's only the corn shell, and that would be the entire population of the nursing school. So what is the population of the nursing school? Uh, I'll have to get back to you on the total population. And do nurses make a living wage? Do they earn somewhere around sixty to $80,000? Do they earn more than the area median income? And are those good jobs that we should be creating that have economic impact? I you? think they're very good jobs, yes. $300 million, we've actually raised that for just a park in my district. We have invested $275 million in a park. Can, will, will CUNY commit $300 million to get this done and fill this hole in the ground and educate 
hundreds if not thousands of nurses and generate well, the economic the, activity that comes with it. The 300 million is for the core and shell. So how much to get it all done? Probably 800 million dollars. It's 300 million dollars to build an entire building and then you're estimating a half a for billion dollars to put inside. Building a science building where half of it is for the nursing school and the other half is for research. Why is your number 800 million when I believe Hunter's number is 360 million? Because if you look, it's the, the, I think the 360 million that you're talking about is the core and shell. I, I think that there's a problem when we're talking about 300 million and then you're throwing on another, it's 800 million additional on top of the 300 or oh, total? The total. I, I, can we get the $300 million to get the shell built? Well, we are really pushing very hard to basically ask for that. We is it in your request. request to the council? Is it in your testimony today? It's in the request. Will you, will you ask us right now for the $300 million? Yes. <laughs> yes, I will ask. Can you ask? We need money to build the, the science building, the corn shell, $300 million. Okay, thank you. Next question. I see that uh, according to our numbers, you have 14,166 full-time instructional staff, 17,986 part-time instructional staff. Is that roughly accurate? I think full-time staff, we have about 7,600 full-time staff. And part-time staff, um, I'm sorry, Councilman Callis, can you repeat I, that number that you had? I'm talking about instructional staff. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So I have 14,166 full-time instructional staff uh, from the fall of 2017 numbers, which we have access to, and uh, 17,986 part-time instructional staff. Yeah, the, the full-time staff is about 7,600 instructional staff, and the part-time staff, um, I will get you the actual number, but I believe it's probably about uh, 13,000, not 17,000. Okay, so our numbers were actually better for you than your numbers because you're saying that there are twice as many part-time staff than full-time staff, so could we perhaps go from, what, what if, so I guess first question, do you think that professors and instructional staff and educational staff can do a better job if they are full-time or part-time? Research shows that um, in terms of uh, progress to degree for students and outcomes for students that it's better to have a full-time instructor. Thank you, I really appreciate that level of honesty. Uh, will CUNY, in the interest of the information you just shared, thank you because otherwise we would have gone back and forth a lot, <laughs> uh, commit to doubling the instructional staff so that, the full-time instructional staff, so you're not relying on part-time instructional staff. By the way, this is personal to me because my mother t was an adjunct at John Jay and LaGuardia and that was not a living. I yeah. was on free and reduced school lunch while she was teaching at, at CUNY. No, I hear you. And, and um, in our budget request, we are seeking funding for, to hire 800 additional full-time faculty over the next four years. We very much value our, our part-time faculty. We have wonderful adjunct faculty. Um, but as I said earlier, the studies do show it's better outcomes for students with full-time faculty. So we do have a commitment to grow our full-time faculty. But again, we, we're seeking funding in, in order for us to do so. Uh, would you be willing to be a little bit more aggressive and just say let's double the full-time faculty and double the number of students we can, so, sorry, so we can increase and do better by our students? Um, well, if we, can, if we can get funding for 800 over four years, we'll start there um, and, and, you know, make sure that we can continue to uh, hire more full-time faculty. Doubling is a, is a very aggressive, uh, you know, number, so I, I don't want to commit to that right now, but um, our request is seeking funding for 800 over four years. Uh, my final question is relates to this Excelsior Scholarship. I, yeah. When I was running in 2012, I wanted to make uh, CUNY available through a very similar model. Governor Cuomo proposed a model. It's something that I support, but I'm disappointed. According to our numbers, there's only 475 uh, out of 23,000 Excelsior recipients uh, in the CUNY system. Is that correct, and how do we get Excelsior for more CUNY students. Yeah. I think that number probably refers to the um, number, that sounds close to the number of community college Excelsior recipients. The total number of Excelsior recipients in last year, in, in academic year 17, 18, which was the first year of the program, was a little over 3,300. So CUNY had about 3,300 Excelsior students in, in the first year. How do we increase that? 
Yeah, I'm, thank you, Mark. 3,264 3, in year one. So how do we how do we increase that number? Well, we're, we are expecting an increase for this year, and again, you know, we're in the middle of of the year, and so. Uh, thank you, Elaine. So, so numbers are. Um, we do expect an increase in the numbers, and we and we think that we'll have well over 4,000 for this year. Um, it's only year two of the program, so I think as the program, um, you know, continues that we will certainly see an expansion at CUNY. Thank you. I just need to get a little clarity. You say you have 7,627 full-time instructional Correct. personnel. Correct. As of uh, 2018 as of fall 2018. So That's with both the senior semester. and community colleges. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then in um, a document that, that you have submitted here on page 223, uh, it says that there are 11,600 part-time faculty. Is yeah, that, that it's, it's probably a little bit more now, okay. um, but yes, that sounds like it's in the, in the ballpark of where we are in part-time faculty. And then for adjunct full-time employee count, according to the City Human Resources Management System, it indicates that there are 1,841 adjuncts on payroll. Um, I'll have to check that number. Um, we consider the adjuncts part-time employees, so, um, so I have to go back and check that. Okay. Be yeah, sorry, yes, I don't and, have an And we'd answer, like to get that by college yeah, we'll because go back and look at that. the entry uh, in my information says adjunct full-time employees, okay, we'll so go back it's and somewhat confusing. Okay. So if you could clarify that, that would be great. We will. Now, um, mm -hmm. Councilmember Holden talked about new employees. Did you tell us how many 